Let's talk GFCIs and how to avoid getting into trouble by testing them properly. We're covering the process, some do's and don'ts, where to find GFCIs and some different types. We're going to cover ungrounded to outlets, uh, when not to test outlets, and then some of our recommendations. All right, Rick with Voyager Home Inspections back again. This is how we're going to go ahead and test our GFCIs. Well, in the kitchen, we are going to test all of our GFCIs first for polarity uh, and power. Go through completely once, all the way through. Now we know all of our outlets have good power. We know that they all are correctly wired. Then we're going to go ahead and go over to our GFCIs and trip them. Verify no power. And now we do the same circuit back over again, making sure that there's no power. Now we still have power at our island, and that's because we still have another GFCI that we need to trip. So if we run into the power before the GFCI, like we did over there, and oh, that's off too. So this is our one that we didn't trip, that's just for the island. We'll trip that. No power there. No power island there. And no power island here. Now we know power, polarity, all and they're all GFCI protected. Now we're going to restore it, just make sure the power restored at both of them. The old way of doing it was, is you just get to an outlet and then you would just push a little button on your tester. Now if you did that and you tripped it first, uh, let's say I tripped that one there. We know that our GFCI reset is all the way down at the end there. Now if I tripped it, go back and reset it and it doesn't reset, now there is five outlets that I haven't tested for power and polarity. So we're gonna go ahead and test for power and polarity first, then trip the circuit. So here I was, I was in a house, I had already tested all the bathrooms for power and polarity. Now I'm testing the GFCI. So I tripped it at the GFCI, go and make sure the other one shuts off, come back, and lo and behold, the reset doesn't reset. Now if I hadn't done that before, uh, tested the pol power and polarity at the outlet in the other bathroom, and tripped the GFCI, I'd never know if that other bathroom a didn't have power, B didn't have uh, proper polarity. All right, these are the GFCI outlets uh, that are particularly important to test at the outlet themselves. So you want to hit the test button and kind of put your finger right in front of the reset button. Um, and the reason is, is that these guys will sometimes break and pop off. And then if it shoots, it'll shoot across the room, potentially into our drain. So, now this GFCI, because that button is broken, our comment is going to be to replace this. I did an inspection at an occupied home on that particular outlet. My process at the time was just to test GFCIs randomly with the little test button. Well, in the other bathroom, I tested it, it popped the button out, and it went down into the drain. So not only power and polarity, 
but also I wasn't able to restore the power uh, for this occupied home. With this particular setup of a GFCI, you can put that button in and restore the power. And if it needs a trip, it will trip and pop that button across the room. Uh, but at least you can go ahead and still have power and protection. It still needs to be replaced. All right, let's talk about where to find them. Now, GFCIs can be hidden anywhere, and I've found them in the weirdest, most unusual places. But in general, uh, we are going to find them at the countertops. Uh, sometimes uh, the GFCIs will actually be at the breakers in the panel uh, in the kitchen again countertops uh, a lot of times we'll find them in the pantry whether it's just a receptacle um, or just a push button outlet um, we can uh, find our kitchen breakers uh, or our kitchen GFCIs at the breakers themselves bathrooms usually at the countertop sometimes in the vanity uh, and then some of our older homes will have the exterior outlets on the bathroom circuit. But typically our exterior outlets are going to be GFCI protected and that GFCI reset is going to be in the garage. Um, again, probably hidden in a cabinet uh, behind some boxes or whatnot, but usually found in the garage. Sometimes the laundry room can be on that same garage GFCI circuit. Uh, or the GFCI for the laundry room will be at the laundry room utility sinks uh, countertop. Jetted tubs usually found inside the access panel. Open up the access panel to get underneath the jetted tub. Uh, GFCI is there. It could also be at the breaker in the panel. Uh, and then I've also found them a lot of times in the master closet. So we can see them at the in the water closet or toilet room uh, if it's a fancy bathroom. Uh, sometimes underneath the sink or next to the sink, usually on a separate circuit than the outlets in the bathroom themselves. Again, generalization of where to find them. Where is particularly important of where your resets are. Uh, I was in a laundry room and back in the day when I had the push button tester, I tripped the laundry room expecting it to be on the bathroom GFCI. It was on the garage GFCI outlet. Well, about a year prior to that, the homeowner had put in a, uh, or had somebody put in cabinets in the garage and covered them up. Needless to say, I had to help take all of his food from his refrigerator and his freezer and bring it into the interior, wasting a half an hour of my time, um, all because of my process. I just recently did a brand new build, a one year warranty. And I guess there was a problem with the backsplash, so he called the builder. Builder replaced the backsplash, and when that uh, backsplash was replaced, they covered up the GFCI outlet. I asked him, I'm like, hey, where's your GFCI uh, in your kitchen? And he had told me the entire story of how they covered it up, and they were coming back out to go ahead and uh, expose that GFCI circuit. If I would have tripped it, he would have not had any power at half of his um, kitchen outlets. So if you can't find the reset for that GFCI circuit, don't trip it with your tester. So another time that I won't test the GFCI is if the garage refrigerator slash freezer uh, is on that GFCI circuit. Uh, if that garage GFCI uh, doesn't reset, then there's going to be no power to that um, refrigerator or freezer. So. At any point, at any time, you find that if you trip that GFCI and you can't restore the power, is it going to affect the occupants of the home? Um, are they going to lose food? Uh, is the computer going to be shut off? Or are they going to um, be adversely affected by it? Um, then I would not test those GFCIs uh, in those specific situations. Rounded outlets can be GFCI protected. If you put your tester in and you find a GFCI receptacle that is ungrounded, there is nothing wrong with that. As long as you push that test button and it trips and then the reset button and it resets, then that is considered a good outlet and a good fix for some of our ungrounded outlets even throughout our house. Now testers 
the way that testers work is that they take current and then they dump it down the ground prong of the tester. So if there's no ground wire, then it, the tester can't trip a ungrounded GFCI receptacle. Now a common misconception is that that onboard test button is just a test of the functionality of the tripping mechanism itself and that is untrue. So the tester actually generates a ground fault and then that's what causes the outlet to trip. So your ungrounded outlets uh, even downstream will still be GFCI protected as well. So but the only way to test that is by pushing the test button on that GFCI receptacle and then going and testing which outlets did shut off. So as we've seen, GFCIs cannot work, especially on ungrounded outlets. The tester itself can go bad. It can prevent us from testing other outlets. It can put us in sticky situations. You don't need them to do your job. They can, will waste time when problems arise. They cost more than the non-GFCI outlet testers. The onboard test button is the only UL recognized method for testing those GFCIs. So save yourself some time, money, and frustration by just not using a GFCI tester. At Voyager, we're going to go through the entire inspection, testing for power and polarity. Then at the end of the inspection, that's when we're going to focus on our GFCI protection. We'll go around to the kitchen, the exterior, the bathrooms, the laundry room, any other place that has GFCI protection or needs it. And then we'll test for GFCI uh, protection on that circuit uh, and those outlets.